Dostlar hepinize merhaba. Şu an yanımda Fernhey'den Bill var. Kendileri quad bike geliştiriyor ve Türkiye'de de üretime başladılar. UPS tarafından kullanılan bir quad bike. Tamamıyla elektrikli ve şu anda kargo sektörde bir dönüşüme yol açıyor. O yüzden daha fazla sizi de bekletmeden hızlıca röportaja geçelim. Welcome Bill. How are you? Thank you very much. I'm fine, thank you. It's good. It's great having you. And as you know, today we're going to talk about the Fernhey quad bikes. How much can you tell us about them? Micro mobility. Okay is an evolving market because people have just become accustomed to going online to buy a box of uh, bulbs as opposed to walking downstairs to the hardware store to buy the box. Yep. Certainly in America and certainly in other European cities. And that's just going to grow and grow and grow. And COVID took that evolving movement to micromobility and just went whoosh. And people became even more accustomed to it. The problem is that the infrastructure of cities really wasn't ready for it. So, for example, in a city like New York or a city like London, the trucks, the congestion, then they come up with congestion pricing and regulations to try to discourage the trucks. New York just started a congestion pricing program. So what's the solution? The solution is to go from light duty vehicles, Ford Transit Connect, the Diablo, into a vehicle, if you will, in our case, a four-wheel cargo bike, but it's a bike. So it's allowed to go into the bike lanes. And it's also healthy and it's also narrow. So it also doesn't double park. It can pull in. So micromobility will, it is an evolving market. It's not moving as quickly as most people thought it would, but that's because change is the enemy of a lot of companies like FedEx and the like, but we're going to get there. We, Fernay, have had the enormous luxury of being incubated inside of UPS. Six years ago, a British engineer uh, who's an innovator who worked in Boris Johnson's sustainability program went to his friend at UPS and said, I've got an idea. And his idea was this four-wheel cargo bike. And that friend, who's the head of sustainability for UPS in Europe and Asia, said, I'll tell you what. I, I, I don't have money to do research, but build one. We'll pay for it. We'll study it. Build another one. And over five years, it evolved to the point where there was a vehicle, a cargo bike, that UPS genuinely believed would fit well within its, certainly in its urban operations. Their problem was that this vehicle that had been developed was a prototype. They needed it to be engineered for serial production to a standard that fleets could live with. They lamented the fact that most people in the cargo bike space were guys who were at bike companies, they took a steroid shot, now they have e-bikes, then they take an aerial steroid shot, and they now have cargo bikes, but they're bike people. They, they, they don't understand the fleet mentality and they surely can't produce a piece of equipment that's quality enough to endure the rigors of cities. So I was invited to COP26 in Glasgow 2020, uh, two years ago. UPS wanted to sit. This fellow Robin had met me uh, actually just once on, online because I found what he was doing fascinating. They were pushing him to find a partner. He brought me or he said they want to meet you. And over dinner, as I jokingly say, I was seduced over a scotch in Scotland because UPS, some of the most senior people, encouraged me to take on a project, a business of taking this prototypical equad that they it had been developed to their needs and put it in serial production. They were aware of the fact that I had been working for probably 20, 25 years with the automotive industry in Turkey, birthed the automobile industry in Turkey, literally, and I had worked trying to bring a taxi to New York. I don't know if you ever watched. There was a whole competition for the taxi of tomorrow. We were one of three finalists. We didn't win. Then we worked for four years trying to become the postal truck in America. And they did two years of studies. Electric, of course. All these things were electric. And unfortunately, Donald Trump decided electric vehicles really weren't needed. So here I had all this experience dealing with electric vehicles and having good relations with contract manufacturers because, as you know, Turkey has never had, never, ever had a car with a Turkish brand. They've always been produced, and they are today only producing cars that have Ford, Fiat, 
Hyundai, never a Turkish brand. Okay. So here's the challenge. Take this four-wheel vehicle, get it engineered to the point where it could go into serial production, put it into serial production, try to maximize the supply chain sourced in Turkey, and off we go. And now you have the first ever four-wheel vehicle, not a truck, not a bus, but a vehicle that's a Turkish branded product. And it's already on the streets in three continents, eight countries, 18 cities. By the end of March, it'll be 23 cities. And that's where UPS wants their vehicles. Because we have the honor of being, in essence, UPS's, the producer of UPS's equads, because you saw on the Instagram, they called it theirs. If you're selling the gold standard, it's easier to go to other customers and say, look at this. They said, oh, it's, you know, but this is more expensive. I said, well, guess why? Because it's safer because it's more reliable. Now, if you want to buy a cheapy knockoff, be my guest. But if you want something where your workers are uh, your top priority, as they should be, come with us. So we also now have customers in different countries. It's still a young, emerging market. There are really only three companies that are considered viable success stories in this space. Others will come along. It's even conceivable that a BMW will want to get involved. I don't know. I kind of hope not. But here we are. And I should add, an equal a four-wheel cargo bike is not something that most people have ever heard of, they've ever seen, and more importantly, thought about how they could integrate it into their business. UPS had. but So we are here talking to some large companies who use a lot of small cars to do their work. They pay a lot of parking tickets. In, in New York, UPS last year paid $31 million in parking tickets. Of course, they've got to double park. If they don't double park, they've got to find a place to park. If they find a place to park, they probably waste 15 minutes. That's crazy. And they can't afford to do it. So they pay for the ability to double park. So it's a function of going to somebody and say, listen, you're using cars. We think we may be able to help you figure out how to migrate some of your fleet into cargo bikes. You're never going to, you know, this Equad's not going to carry an 85-inch television. It's 75 cubic feet. It's, it's highly efficient. And the idea is that some portion, but is an appropriate migration uh, strategy. So you have to work with people. You know, IBM yep. invented a computer in the 1940s. Yes. They didn't just go into companies and say, hey, by the way, get rid of your whole bookkeeping system. We now have this. Are you kidding me? So what they had to do is spend time and train and study. So when I bought the company, or the majority share, changed the name from Fernhay, which was named after the inventor, to Fernhay Solutions. We are really a solution company, almost like a consultant, studying where equads could play a part in a existing transportation delivery ecosystem and hopefully find where it fits. So laundry companies, dry cleaning companies, they're local. They're making lots of little deliveries. That's a good use. Yes. Parcel companies, UPS and the like. But you'd be surprised. Parks in London, the London Parks has asked us to produce an equad where when it gets to its destination in the park, the roof, you know, there's a, there's a canopy. I can show you pictures. I'll give you pictures. It turns into a concession stand. It's neat. Like I'll send you, I'll show you the pictures. Fine. So little by little by little, people are coming up with new use cases. It will be, its moment has not yet come, come. but it will come. Okay. So you, just like you said, we are in the verge of an innovation that will take place and replace most of the known and used things like vans and other cargo vehicles that today we have in our lives and especially big cities like London, New York, where just like you said, the parking tickets uh, play a huge role and like make companies lose money. So it is a technology that is needed. This e-quad bike is a solution indeed. Like it's, it solves problems. And the key thing you said in here is it is reliable and is quality product. So another key factor that you just mentioned is that it is manufactured in Turkey. It is manufactured in Turkey, Temsa R&D facility. And I want you to a little bit about how hard or easy it is to navigate when you manufacture in Turkey and to get the product from the Turkey to out there to, to the world. And how much is, of a quality does it play to manufacture in Turkey? 
The contract manufacturing industry in Turkey is regarded as top of the heap. That's what they do. And I think Turkey is now, I think, the fourth largest exporter of vehicles in the world. And it's a highly skilled, well-educated workforce. A lot of the workforce doesn't get paid that, you know, that well. So I had the extraordinary uh, benefit of being able to pick up a phone and call a friend, Tolga, who's the head of Temsa. And I said, Tolga, listen, I know this is like a, a tiny little ant compared to your million dollar autonomous buses and the like, but would you consider taking on the serial production of this vehicle? He said, I'll do anything you ask. I said, no, no, no, no. I don't want you doing me a favor. If it doesn't make sense for you as a corporate matter, please don't do it. We want to be in this space. We want to be in the mobility space and range from the big bus to the little delivery vehicle. So no, it isn't such, such just doing a favor. It's something we're very interested in, particularly because it's batteries and it's swappable batteries. So Tolga, who actually had been one of the, pe the people working on the team that designed and built the Ford Transit Connect, very much understood that the Ford Transit Connect took vans and brought it down to the smallest size possible, right? The, the Fiat Diablo, uh, the Peugeot Panther, the Ford Transit Connect, yeah. they've all been produced here. But then the next step, if you're looking at the roadways, is from this little Ford Transit Connect into the bike lane. And believe it or not, the capacity of a Ford Transit Connect is only about 2.3 times a bike. So there is the ability to go from a Ford Transit Connect down to... So in terms of navigating the waters of Turkey, I've been swimming in it for 25 years <laughs> with some of the more successful business people in Turkey. So I had that luxury. And frankly, I think that's why UPS thought that I was the right person to do it. Oh, great, actually. And you just said that the vans or the other cargo vehicles now is taking place in the bike lane because it is possible to do that. And the recent study is also compared to the e-cargo bikes to older stuff like the vans, but not through the e-bike or the place they took in roads in other parts, like because they are electric, how much emission they give out to the sky, like the air air pollution, the air quality, how much does it affect our day-to-day -day life? Because where these vehicles are locationed, we also live. And these vehicles are locationed in the city. And when compared to the other vehicles, where do you put the e-cargo bikes in terms of emissions, the electricity, the future and the sustainability part of it? Well, first of all, it's electric, so it's zero emissions. Yep. Number two, it has a swappable battery system. So instead of buying, you buy eight electric vans to service your company, well, you got to put charging stations in your building. You then have to make sure there's enough electricity coming to your building because most of these older buildings weren't designed to generate enough power to power. With a, with a cargo bike, it's a, it's a swappable battery. You just literally pull it out. Mm -hmm. And then you can just put it into a charging station, a freestanding charging station. So the ability to enter the market is infinitely easier. A cargo bike, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. The van the guy's using today is sixty-two thousand because it's combustion. The electric version is one hundred fifty thousand. Plus he needs charging stations. Plus he needs infrastructure. So. The migration is happening, and what's going to push that migration is legislation. COP26, they came up with the commitment, you know, zero emission, 2030, 2050. They made all these promises, but frankly, they made the promises and didn't really have a way of delivering on those promises. We are giving them the opportunity to live true to their promises, and cities like London, Amsterdam, Copenhagen, New York now a bit, are creating... Incent uh, incentives. The currency is stick. Congestion pricing. You want to bring your truck in, thirty dollars, forty dollars. Other cities have actually zero emission zones. Well, guess what? If you're a major package carrier, and suddenly Santa Monica, California, is a zero emission zone, that van isn't coming in unless it's electric. Yes. Very so now we're in Santa Monica. Yes. So the Equal bike has now a new city. Yes, and in some measure, it's the legislation yeah. that's forcing people to do something that they know they should be doing, but they're not happy with change. 
And while we were on the subject of legislation, I also want to ask you about the navigating the legislation. It is important to navigate through legislation, but it, it is also important to navigate in the actual city structures. Some cities allow these type of vehicles to navigate easily and while some do not. And that is solely on the fact of why and how they were built. And so my question is how the quad e-bike and wrestles these problems when it comes to different city structures, not only by legislations, but actually by the way the city is built? Okay, that's a very good question. For the most part, cities welcome cargo bikes. We haven't found a city that doesn't want it. Now, to some degree, without a bike lane, it's far more challenging. So there's an example where cities, city of New York, developed a whole bike lane uh, structure, and it enabled the cargo bike uh, user to have an easier experience and frankly create an edge over the truck because there's no there are no lights and traffic in the cargo bike lanes. I'm told that even in Istanbul and in Turkey, there's now some effort to try to increase bike lanes and again, moving people out of trucks and into bike lanes. Um, wrestling the legislation, the mandate's out there. Zero emission 2030. So cities are doing it. Cities that have emission-free zones, Amsterdam, Copenhagen, Stockholm, London, to name some. So in those places, if you're in the delivery business mm -hmm. and you can't get your truck into that area, you have to have an alternative. Vail, Colorado, ski capital in America. The little town decided that they didn't want any trucks coming into the town. Lo and behold, fine. Now the UPS and the FedEx are calling, we need your vehicle. So the legislation, the regulatory framework will make it harder for people to avoid it. Bike lanes will make it easier for them to use it. And, you know, Victor Hugo said, there's nothing more majestic than an idea whose time has come. E-mobility, the time has come, particularly because of the outrageous migration to the Amazons of the world when, you know, 15 years ago, there was, you know, it was a rarity to be able to order something. I got five kids. They order more meals to be delivered to the house. I said, what are you doing it for? It costs money. He says, no, no, we don't pay for it. The restaurant pays for it. So it's a whole mentality and a whole change. And hopefully in the, you know, the coming years, the growth of, of e-mobility will be there and we'll be there to hopefully um, reap some of the benefit. Yeah, and it, hopefully in the years to come. And while while we were on that, the the quad bike is, by the way of it is being a bike, it is actually a micro mobility solution, if I'm correct. Correct. Micro mobility has mostly been dominated by peer to peer solutions, mostly not by uh, the solutions that are provided to companies or provided by the companies. So mm -hmm. some some stuff like scooters and time based rental scooters or old stuff like that or the bikes. And it now it is time. They are mostly adopted in nearly every European country, in Istanbul, in US. And how much time do you think it will take the other micromobility solutions, such as the quad bike, to reach this level of micromobility sharedness or adaptation that we currently have in peer-to-peer -peer stuff? I think it's almost entirely based upon a city's commitment to move to zero emission. When, they, when there, there are cities in Germany, smaller cities, that at 8 a.m. bollards come up on the streets, and for the next 10 hours, you can't come into the city with a truck. But they say necessity is the mother of all invention, so you need an alternative, it happens. It'll happen. Istanbul will happen. If Zainab does her job, you'll see the equads on the streets of uh, Istanbul. It's just going to happen. Carrefour. You know, people call up. They want their food delivered, right? Yeah. Didn't happen before. They need to find a way to do an efficient, zero-emission delivery system. So, stand by. Yeah. Thank you so much, Bill. It was a great conversation. It was great having you. And it was insightful. The answers were great. And thank you so much. Okay. It's my pleasure. Arkadaşlar dinlediğiniz için teşekkür ederiz. Gördüğünüz üzere geleceğin teknolojilerini konuştuk ve geleceğin teknolojileri de mikromobilite ee, Bill'in de dediği gibi birkaç sene içerisinde tüm şehirlerde belki İstanbul'da dahil olmak üzere bu tür teknolojilere rastlayacağız. Eğer ki sorularınız varsa lütfen yorumlarda belirtin. Bile özel olarak iletmek istediğiniz sorular varsa da yazabilirsiniz. Onları da bile iletiyor oluruz. Tekrardan teşekkürler. Müzik